saying, Comrade President, that there is a need to change the structure of the economy with the state playing a major role to control and direct the social and economic development. With that addition, we think we'll be covered. Thank you, Comrade President. Thank you very much, uh, Sakao. Let's take teachers on this resolution. If it, okay. So uh, they are not on this resolution. Sipau? If I saw very well the board that came there, I thought it was Sip. You covered? Oh, yes, uh, take the podium. Eshipau, we rise to support uh, Satau in the, what they have proposed, but we would like to enhance uh, that with the following proposals. We believe, Eshipau, that we need to run a campaign against the strategy by the private sector that went on an investment strike in South Africa. We also believe, as Shipau, that we need to engage the private sector with regards to offshore investments that has led to massive job losses, and we would use as an example the CESO that has massively invested in the USA. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sakao. Can I come back to Satao to check whether they are okay with the amendments comrades uh, were making? Hi, Sboile Mongame. Uh, Comrade President, uh, we accept all the amendments as presented by Congress. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sir. This is our resolution now, Comrades, and it has got to be implemented. Can I quickly, in two minutes, whilst uh, Oatu is getting ready and coming to the site, ask uh, the IEC to just uh, come to the podium and uh, brief us. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Apani from the uh, Electoral Commission of South Africa, commonly known as the IEC. As you all know, the IEC has been appointed to ad independently administer the electoral process for the 12th National Congress of the Congress of the South African Trade Unions. And our responsibility could be summarized in four areas. One is preparing the nomination. Secondly is to announce the nomination. Thirdly is to administer the voting process, to do the counting process, declaring results, and lastly to prepare a final election report. Two of the responsibilities have been done already. The third, which is why we're here today, is to administer the actual voting process and later on the counting uh, process. Now, as you all know, the positions that are subject to an election is six positions, but uh, five of these positions are uncontested. There's only one position that is going to be contested through a, an election uh, via a secret ballot, and that is the position of the B deputy general secretary. I also need to indicate that uh,
that as part of the tool that is critical to this election is a voter's roll. The papers that you see falling here, falling here is the voter's roll uh, that we have received from the Secretariat, uh, the COSATU uh, colleagues that are helping with the administration of this election. So the voter's roll is to ensure the authentic uh, voting process so that all the delegates eligible and confirmed are the ones that are going to be taking part in this election. The voting method. The election shall be conducted on the basis of the first past the post system. In terms of this method, a candidate who receives the highest number of votes shall be declared elected to the position of Deputy General Secretary. Voting shall be by means of a secret ballot on the basis of one person, one vote. On the ballot paper, the voter shall be required to vote for one person only by placing a tick or a cross next to the candidate of his or her choice. A ballot paper shall be considered spoiled if it has a mark for both candidates or has more than one mark for each of the candidates it will also be considered spoiled if it is marked in such a way that it is impossible to determine the voter's choice. It is also uh, spoiled if it's not an official ballot paper that was initially issued. The administration of the voting process. Voting shall be conducted according to the following procedures. The voter shall be required to produce his or her voting identity card or a name tag or accreditation badge, accreditation card. These are all the cards that delegates will have. But I must indicate that we've discussed this and realized that some of the delegates might not necessarily have the, the cards with them. Or some cards might be damaged. So it is important that if you do not have the accreditation card, you are required to have an ID or a driver's license or any form of possible official identification. And again, during the voting process, a delegate's name shall be checked against the voter's roll, and one found, it will be crossed off to ensure that the voter does not vote twice. A delegate will also be required to sign next to his or her name. And as part of the IC process, we're also going to mark the voter's finger with an indelible ink. It will be a very small mark, and it, I hope it will not interfere with uh, the person. The voter shall be issued then with a ballot paper for the contested position of Gen Deputy General Secretary. And then the voter shall be ushered to the voting booths where she or he will be allowed to cast his or her vote in complete privacy. The voter shall be shown the ballot boxes where he or she will be required to place his ballot paper. And we call upon delegates to fold the ballot paper once because it's going to help us when we are doing the counting process, if we have to unfold a ballot that has been folded several times. So please just fold the ballot paper once. It's an A4 paper with only two candidates on it. If a voter claims that he or she has spoiled his or her ballot prior to it being lodged into the ballot box, the electoral staff or an officer of the IC shall issue the voter with a second ballot. The counting procedures. Reconciliation. Voting shall be counted soon after voting has been completed. During counting, the following procedures shall apply. And I must indicate at this stage uh, that the observers who are going to be part of the counting process and even IEC staff will be required to be inside the room where counting takes place until counting is finished. No one is going to be allowed in and out of the counting uh, room, which will be the voting station downstairs. So again, during counting, the, elect 
election officer or the ICE officer dis declares the total number of votes cast based on the number of names that shall have been crossed off the voters roll. Secondly, the ballot boxes are to be opened and ballot papers counted face down in order to check if they reconcile with the declared, the declared number of votes cast. Then, votes are aggregated per candidate, per position, in this case one position, and results immediately announced until all votes have been completed. Once the count has been completed, the election officer completes the results form or the results slip, which records the number of spoiled votes, abstain abstentions or unmarked ballots, and a total number of votes cast per candidate. Recounts. The election official may decide to conduct a recount at any time before the declaration of the results. The election official shall conduct a recount on receiving a written request from an observer before the declaration of the results. Requests for a recount must be supported with reasons. The maximum number of recounts at any election shall be limited to two. One of the requests of a candidate or an observer and one, of, one at the discretion of the election official. The election observers. Congress shall appoint election observers who shall be entitled to witness voting and the counting process. Prior to the opening of the polls, observers will examine the ballot box to ensure its emptiness before sealing it. And we are going to seal it with a security seal whose number is going to be given to the election observers and candidate agents, if any. I understand there was going to be candidate agents as well who are going to be part of the uh, observers to the election process. The observers are not allowed to collect or handle ballot boxes and papers or ballot papers and will not be allowed within close proximity of the voting booths and the ballot box during the voting period except to cast their own votes because some of them will be you know confirmed delegates who are participating in elections so they can participate as an election as voters but once they play the role of the observers they will be indicated where the observers are going to sit and they shouldn't uh, be in, uh, moving around in the voting station. Objections or objections to voting or electoral objections. In the event of an objection to the electoral process, an election tribunal shall be convened and shall be constituted by the election official or election officer and the ele election observers. Okay, I've got additional notes that I took after I've had some discussions with the colleagues helping us to uh, administer this election. The one is regarding replacements. I hope the list that I've got, because we waited for a while to make sure the lists are final. Now, in case there's replacements, we are calling upon delegates to make sure that if they are there to, be, to vote on behalf of somebody, they need to wait their affiliation to finish voting before they can be given that opportunity to vote in case of replacements. Uh, the other two notes I've already mentioned, uh, one was about the counting process that observers will be locked in the counting room until the counting is finished or any IEC official will also be locked in the counting room until counting is finished. Even if it means counting has to happen until 4 o'clock, we'll have to sit in there until that time. And the last one was about IDs, so that the delegates are aware that if their ID cards or their accreditation cards are damaged, they will still be allowed to participate in this election if they can produce a positive form of identification uh, with them or with, to the officials. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, uh, IEC.
Uh, just to mention that uh, so that you record it, and I'm giving you what I think is the correct name and say name of the, uh, the other candidate, other than how it is recorded. That he's Oscar Parker, not the Parker uh, as it is there, if that is going to be confirmed even with the candidate himself, so that it is properly written. Yeah, uh, that is the report, comrades. NUM? Before you come, Sicilian, let's just uh, the the reporters just uh, remembered one small thing. Maybe it's what you want to inquire about. Yes, uh, thanks uh, very much, uh, President. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, apologies. I forgot to mention the important aspect. I did give the report, but I didn't state when can you go down and vote, because the station is open. But the manner in which we are going to do it, because as you know, you're going to vote according to affiliations. We are going to use the uh, alphabetical list as we have received from our colleagues helping us with the process. And starting off, we're going to start with Sepau. It's going to be one affiliation coming down. And after they voted, we're going to come and request that the next affiliation or affiliations come through. Because it might happen that an affiliation has got uh, very fewer candidates and therefore we need to uh, sorry, not uh, delegates, and we need to group them together as two or three affiliations. That was just the last bit from my side. Thanks. Thank you very much. And you, M? There seems to be a problem with the mic there. Two standard. Okay. President, uh, if I did not hear properly, my apologies. But I had. Um, the electoral officer saying if a person has made a mistake and the ballot is in the box, that person will be given an opportunity to vote again. If indeed I had to correct my leader, I don't think that will be proper. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure that point is noted. I also felt a bit about it. I'm happy NUM is raising it. Dinosa? No, no, President, we are, we are covered by NUM. We are rising on that point, point as well. Okay, I do not see any other banner. Can I ask, uh, oh, Nihau? No, President, very quickly, we just wanted to, with the clarity given, ask by NUM quickly suggest that the affiliates will send one delegate to be part of the observers. Can they clarify the voting station where so that when that time comes, we know, and so that we don't waste time, we we'll continue with the program. Concrete proposal on the observers as the Congress must uh, appoint, just to agree that uh, each affiliate send a delegate to the voting station. Thank you. One observer per affiliate. Sir, can you come and uh, clarify that point of a, oh, before, FAO? come and then that is the power. Oh, sure. No, no, we, the President had IEC very well. Uh, explaining the process uh, elections. We, we were worried about uh, how elections were conducted by IEC. But after listening to them here and now, we were a bit comfortable. Actually, we were even of the view that in the interest of time, they were going to propose that we go with show of hands. Uh, we, 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 it's, it's just one position. Uh, we don't have time. Uh, we can just do it by show of hands. But please, on a serious note, on a serious note, we, we, we wanted to appreciate that particular aspect. Thank you very much, uh, Fau. Sipau. Uh, 
and NUM will follow very shortly. Uh, thanks, uh, President. President, we actually are seeking clarity because we feel we are a bit under pressure on, on, on the basis that our comrades are out to support SATU for now. Now, if the understanding is that the elections are starting now, we are then requesting some form of flexibility that the affiliate that is ready in that sequence be called before us. Alternatively, we'll be given time to recollect our delegates that are supporting SATU. Thank you, President. Look, I, I was going to be suggesting on that one, not sure how the Congress is going to feel. Because what will happen now, after this report, we, 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 we allow OWA to, to address us in just less than 10 minutes, then we break for lunch. Then if you agree, you could then say and suggest to the IEC uh, that that process begins after lunch. Uh, I'm sure you'd be okay with that. Yes, I think we should agree on that. Uh, Satao? President, uh, we're in fact raising to be saying this process should start after lunch um, because we, we are not worried of our delegation because we are the last one in any way to vote because of the alphabetical matter. But I think it will be important after lunch when everybody is seated so then that process runs smoothly. Because if it runs now, you will have other delegates outside of the room in which once they skip, there will be a problem for them to come back. Okay. So that is our proposal, President. No, thanks very much. Uh, my apology to you, uh, uh, Comrade, uh, my leader, uh, NUM Nobalawa. Thank you, President. As NUM, we, we request to be controversial on the issue of ballot papers. We request that uh, the IEC should confirm the total number of vote, voters, one, and two, the IEC should be allowed to print ballot papers equivalent to the number of voters, no provision for spoiled papers, because extra ballot papers might fall into wrong hands. If one has uh, uh, voted wrongly, that should be regarded as a spoiled ballot, and that person should not have a second bite. Okay, that, that's uh, clear. Let, let's invite uh, the IEC, and uh, the, the matter that FAO was raising is definitely not uh, for the IEC. It was for Congress to decide on at another time, not this time now, uh, FAO. Let's allow uh, uh, IEC to, 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 to respond to the clarity-seeking questions, in particular about a, a, a member who says, I, I voted a wrong person. I now change my mind. When the ballot is inside, what do you do? Uh, thanks very much, uh, President. Uh, I think maybe it's because of my inability to pronounce English words. Um, let me just read it again, and I'll probably clarify after I've read it. I said, if a voter claims that he or she has spoiled his or her ballot paper prior to it being lodged into a ballot box, the election officer, electoral officer, shall issue the voter with a second set of ballot. Prior to, meaning before he puts it into the ballot box. So it can never be that he already put it in and he wants another one. So that cannot be the case. Sure. Thank you very much. That is clear. There is a request that uh, we don't say the voting has started now, that uh, voting should start when we return from lunch. And uh, that shall be, you shall come back at that time and we formalize that. Exactly. Are we covered, delegates? That matter NUM has been cleared. Okay. Right. There is FAO, there is NUM, there is uh, 
sakau. Oh, oh, how my God. See a final song, Samu, you will then be the third one. Thank, you. Thank you, President. We are not clarified. We were asking Congress, in fact, not the IEC. Oh. We would, in order to avoid or to minimize fraud, let's print ballot papers that are equivalent to the number of voting delegates. Should a delegate, for whatever reason, spoil their ballot paper, there shall be no option of him or her getting a second ballot paper. That is the proposal we are putting to Congress. We heard what NUM is saying, and I take the following affiliates to respond also to that matter. Uh, Fau? No, no, President, National Union of Mine Workers are raising an important issue that has to deal with the credibility of elections. And we fully agree with what National Union of Mine Workers are saying. You will only be issued one ballot paper. You spoil it, you change your head or your mind before you drop it. Unfortunately, you have to stick by that uh, mark you have made on that ballot paper. There shouldn't be any extra ballot papers. We fully agree with mine work, as you know. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fau, uh, Samu. No, President, we, we agree with NAM, and uh, the clause as proposed by IEC must be scrapped in totality. And then we accommodate the amendment as submitted by NAM. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Communication Workers Union, now how you will follow. Uh, thank you, President. You are just rising to remind the table that uh, we are still waiting for the total number of voters to be declared to Congress as proposed by the NUM. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that, that will be clarified now. Then he clarifies that uh, we move on. No, no, Comrade President, first we want to agree on the, the turning of the, uh, the credentials or the voters' role in plenary so that by the time affiliates go and vote, they start it. But we think, President, we slightly differ with affiliates that talk about printing ballot papers exactly according to the numbers. I, I think it will be the first time in every election that has ever happened in this Congress or even in the national election in the country that uh, exactly the, uh, the number of uh, expected voters' ballot papers is being printed. We think that the IEC has enough capacity, even ourselves, including our scrutinizers that we are going to elect, have capacity to monitor and make sure that they tally the ballot issued and the vote casted. We're taking this in mind, Comrade President, that uh, in this Congress, we have not conducted voter education. We do spoil papers even when voter education has been conducted throughout the countries. It cannot be expected that uh, there will not be a spoiled paper and we realize before we put a, a, a paper in the ballot box that we must change them. Not changing the mind per se, but correcting what we have voted. So we stand opposed, Comrade President, on the matter of the ballot papers. Thanks. Leadership, can we not debate that one, whether who is right, who is wrong on that one, and say we will be observing the process and we are sending our trusted cadres to watch the process closely, how it will be going, and we shall uh, uh, be guided from that point. Can we get IC to uh, clarify or to give us the, 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 the total number of delegates who are voting? Uh, thank you very much, uh, President. The list that I have here uh, has got 18 affiliations. And uh, starting with Sapao, has got 112 delegates confirmed to participate in this election. CWU, 28. Denosa, 108. FAU, 169. Limusa, 10. Neau, 370. NUM 334, Pop Crew 
209, Bausa 17, Sakau 160, Saktu 114, Sa 332, SAFPU 1, Sama 10, SM, SAMW, SAMU 201, Sasau 10, Sasbo 88, Satau 291, and in total we've got 2,563 confirmed delegates to yeah, participate uh, in election. Before we end our attack here, Prataka, please clarify. Vigan Jumli Long Sauz of Kamga Nalea, Ungagabi Big. No, thanks, comrade. What we suggest is that we, the IEC is using the delegation as presented from the unions, which was what submitted. We need to give them, the people who are taking the notes, to give them the numbers of delegates present in the meeting. So there's a different from the numbers, which was the number of people suggested all the delegate if they were present i think the comrades want to know who has attended the congress so the number will be different that's the first one the second one is that one union in the union is not in good standing so what we suggest is that when we come back before we go to vote we then announce exactly the number of people present not the number of people expected including one union that is not here because there's one union that is totally not here but it is in the list there so i think that helps uh, prataika uh, we will hear the last report on that one when we come back from lunch comrades i hope that uh, uh, should set us circled we want to now quickly uh, to invite our uh, international guests from uh, Owatu uh, to come and speak to us, Comrade Alex. Excellency, Mr. President and Chair of the Congress and other National Office Bearers, the leadership of NATU and FEDUSA, leadership of ANC, leadership of SACP, as well as leadership of Alliance, the General Secretary of WFTU, and my own brother-in-law, the Deputy General Secretary of ITUC Brazos, distinguished local and international guests, brothers and sisters. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to convey to you all delegates our warmest greetings of solidarity from the Organization of African Trade Union Unity and to wish you a very successful 12th Kusatu Congress. On behalf of Uwatu, may I also take this opportunity to sincerely thank Kusatu leadership for extending an invitation to our organization to attend this all-important Congress under the team Unity and Cohesion of Kusatu to advance the national democratic revolution. Indeed, it is a great honor for me to be here in this beautiful province of Garten in South Africa, a nation which produced a global icon, the late Nelson Mandela. Madiba, who is one of the few statesmen to have achieved almost universal respect around the world and across the political spectrum. Mandela had unshaking power at the negotiation table, carrying with him an undoubted moral authority 
and gentle with consistent sense of fairness. Comrades, it is almost two years since we lost our great African leader. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Dear comrades, you have chosen a very timely team, not only in the context of South Africa, but in Africa as a whole. As you are aware, that the main work of any trade union organization is to protect, defend, and promote workers' rights and interests. However, the effectiveness of any trade union organization depends on togetherness among members and unity. A basic organizing principle of labor movement is to build cohesion amongst labor groups in order to minimize fragmentation and maximize labor's influence locally, nationally, and internationally. Comrades, there's no doubt that trade unions in Africa continue to play a vital role as the protectors of workers' rights and promoters of decent working and living conditions. In every country, they have continued to achieve notable successes in this respect. At the same time, they remain the main organized force within civil society addressing a wider range of issues related to principles of good governance, democracy, sustainable development, human rights, and socioeconomic rights in general. Consequently, cohesion, unity, and solidarity are very crucial in achieving the aforementioned outcomes. And your particular case, the National Democratic Revolution of South Africa. We want to support the initiative being undertaken by COSATU of bringing together all the athletes on the one strong arm ladder, COSATU. We want to employ all COSATU athletes to work together towards achieving unity and cohesion of labor movement in South Africa for the workers' interests and benefits. The enhanced unity and cohesion in COSATO will lead to effective mobilization of workers, members, and the general public for the national democratic revolution of this wonderful and rich country. Dear comrades, the working class of this country should demonstrate that the unity and cohesion is a necessity for the success of the common cause of struggle for liberation of common people. It is a naked, a naked fact that through unity of struggle, the working class can emerge victorious over its historical class enemy. You can recollect that the heroic working class in this country fought against the ploys and offensive attacks by the forces of imperialism and neocolonialism. Comrades, let me state here categorically that we want to support the South African working class struggle for the better future of all South Africans through the National Democratic Revolution. I would like to remind you that in March 1975 in Accra, Ghana, Owatu General Council adopted a resolution on Southern Africa, which among other things, asserted that the African workers have always been in the forefront of the struggle for the liberation of African countries and their peoples. The resolution noted that the tragic plight of the workers in Southern Africa is the result of the retrogressive policy of the racist minority regimes in Southern Africa. Therefore, our main question is that after the liberation of South Africa from the apartheid regime, has the situation improved for the majority of South Africans? 
I think the answer is no. That is why, without hesitation, Kosatu is talking about national democratic revolution. Uwatu has been constantly ready to support Kosatu in your struggle for the positive change for better and bright future for all South Africans. It always seems impossible until it is done. This was said by the late Nelson Mandela. We acknowledge the fact that building unity and cohesion in any trade union organization is not a one event thing. Rather, it should be an enduring process. Building unity and cohesion is very fundamental for COSATU to remain vibrant and influential because workers in South Africa need to be served when they are well organized under a united and strong COSATU. Therefore, Owatu strongly supports COSATU's principle of one union, one industry, one country, one federation. Non racism, international workers' contract, and solidarity and workers' control. Brothers and sisters, let me conclude my brief remarks by restating that it is an open truth that trade union work, by its nature, is about unity and cohesion, which without it, the labor movement will be rendered irrelevant and toothless and might be very difficult to achieve its intended objectives and plans. There's one philosopher that said, you can go fast, but if you want to go further, go with them. Once again, I wish you a very successful Congress, and may God bless all of us. Viva Kosatu! Viva! Viva South African workers! Viva Owatu. Viva. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our Vice President from Owatu. President, uh, do the honor before we break for lunch. Uh, Comrade Alex. Yes, sir, Your Excellency. Uh, this is the Kosatu blanket that we are presenting to you to cement our relationship with Owatu as an affiliate of Owatu ourselves as Kosatu. Because of your time constraints, we are not going to open it, but you know we can't give you anything that has a bomb inside. This is the Kosatu blanket from all of these workers that are assembled here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thanks, sir. Thank you very much. I still have my beautiful blackberry here. If somebody doesn't come to collect it now, I'm going to give it up for donation. Uh, comrades, let's break for lunch now. And let us... Uh, let us stick to time. It's going to be an hour. We come back at half past two. The general secretaries must appear.
One more time. One, two, testing one, two. One, two, one, two. You happy? I can hear you, Michelle. Can you hear me? Okay, cool.
indicate is that the mediation process failed on the basis of the word voluntary. We must clarify that this clause was, was included in the initial draft settlement that they themselves as the Department of Basic Education had agreed to. Organized labor agreed to a mediation process of honor at the behest of the Department of Basic Education to find a solution on the honor deadlock. The unions agreed because we were of the view that space for negotiation between employer and employee must always be open. It thus shocked us that the Department of Basic Education has now decided to walk away from the agreement despite our willingness to cooperate. It is our view that this is a missed opportunity for an amicable solution to be found and that the DBE has taken the wrong route and is destabilizing the sector. The DBE is once again proving itself to be insensitive to the needs of both the learners and the teachers. The decision to insist on writing the honor during the period 26 November to 4 December is further proof that the DBE has lost touch with the realities that prevail at school level at this time of the year. We remain committed to the process of reviewing Anna. It is clear that the Anna for 2015 is further compromised and it has no credibility. We want to make it clear that any test that is not based on validity, integrity, and reliability defeats the purpose of being an educational tool and therefore only serves a business interest. It is public knowledge by now that the DBE has invested more than 200 million for the administration of ANA and therefore cannot afford to forego the business interest of its partners. We want to insist that in its current form, it is a futile exercise and is tantamount to wasteful expenditure. The DB has clearly put business interests above the education of millions of learners of South in South Africa. We are further dismayed by the fact that on Monday the 23rd this month, the minister addressed school governing bodies, an association, and learner representative by COSAS and the South African Principals Association on what Labour deems to be bargaining issue. It must be noted that SAPA members are also members of teacher unions and therefore cannot have a voice separate from their unions. This is a desperate attempt to divide the teaching fraternity and in the process isolate Labour. Organized Labour appeals to these groupings not to allow themselves to be abused by the minister as a divisive tool. We urge them to stay away from bargaining issues. We further note with disappointment that the intimidation and bullying of our principal has begun across the country to the point where they are being given an ultimatum to either collect the honor or disciplinary letters. It is, an, it is imperative to note that the agreement dealt with more than just the honor, but also remodeling of honor the dispute of the DBE's failure to pay teachers the 0.5% pay progression and to implement the personnel administrative measures, which have both remained unresolved since 2008. The unions remain committed to remodeling honor. We are thus left with no choice but to revert to our original position, which is that our members will not be taking part in any honor related activity in its current form in 2015. This is our collective decision as labor and we will not be
question which was asked and then we'll quickly proceed with our program. Who's from AMN7? Um, your reporter asked for um, an interview with yes, she says she's not doing any interview during the Earth Army program. Ah, Ushole Nam Why is she a ganja and she's a ganja Thank you. 
are still outside must come in, please.
about uh, 15,000 rands. I see you are ready. Then there was another phone, the Blackberry 23, which is in a black and white cover. If you got it, bring it to me. Uh, comrade Usi Komvuisa from the Eastern Cape lost her bag, which is written outside Ikala College. I don't see the other thing written. But my one is at Ikala College, and it's written in a bag. Bring that bag here. It's not yours. I see. We proceed in comrades. <laughs> Ukumalu <laughs> We are inviting Daisy. <laughs> uh, thanks, uh, President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, welcome back. And we are about to start with the voting process, among other things. As you will recall, earlier on there were concerns regarding the uh, list or the total number of delegates that are confirmed to participate in this election. I've had a caucus with the colleagues here, <clears throat> and the number that we have, the total number of people who are in the register is 2484, 2,484. Now, as I said earlier, remember we've got several affiliations, and some of the affiliations don't have a big number of affiliates, or, or members, rather. We are going to try to go according to this list, and which is sorted alphabetically. Now, one of uh, the delegates here suggested that we need to start with unions that are ready. I do not know which unions that are ready, but starting off according to the list sorted alphabetically, it will be Sepau uh, with 112 delegates. So now, members of Sepau can please go downstairs so that we can start the voting process promptly.
Thank you very much, IEC. Uh, my wealth and riches is increasing. I now have a, another one, which is not less than 20,000 rents. Yeah, one of our international guests left her phone or his phone. We, we, we got that phone here. You may come and collect it. We are proceeding now with the next resolution, and I think, Satu, you are ready because it is your resolution now. Are you there, Satu? Sure. Comrades, please allow Satu and they have already begun. As you can look back, you can see the point that is being made. Can we, for, we concentrate, please? Okay. Thank you, Comrade President. Comrade uh, President, we rise to motivate our resolution on local procurement, which is on page 24. Resolution 2.3. Comrade President, we've been talking and talking about local procurement. <coughs> and to be honest, we've been not seeing any progress in that regard. And now, as such, we felt now this is the time. Mengame, Uguti. See act on this local procurement. As you are seeing, my comrades behind me are displaying um, items from locally made material. <laughs> Comrade President, I we must say in this Congress, with Tina and Satu, our investment is doing very well. And these are the products and the returns of our investment. As such, we have made an initiative to establish nationally West South African proudly shops. And we want to register and intensify comrades that we encourage them. Uguti, they must go nationally to our shops. They will find beautiful clothes, a shirt that you can buy from two and 500 rand, and you will get it in those shops at 150. We also want to uh, intensify comrades that how they will identify locally procurement Clothing, it's by the label on the side, Mengame, Eti Proudly South Africa. And uh, Comrade President, we also want to appreciate unions who have begun to source locally from those shops Unions like NUM, we appreciate you. But Comrade President, we're not only talking to COSATU affiliates only here. We're talking to the Alliance at large. That the time is now, Comrade President, to do what is right. We also urge the ANC, we urge the SACP, we urge Comrade President Isanko to help us, Comrade President, in making sure Uguti local procurement, indeed, Comrade President, is a thing. So, having said.
that uh, Comrade President, we want to, I want to shoot straight to the resolution. Comrade uh, President, as such we note that Labour has committed to support local jobs by procuring its goods and services from local industries. However, these commitments were explicitly made in the tripartite local procurement accord, of which COSATU is a signatory to it. However, many COSATU have provided with more clearer local procurement resources and better accessible institutions, which promote local sourcing. Therefore, Comrade President, we believe that affiliates should be provided with some clearer local procurement resources and better accessible institutions which promote local sourcing, which, we, which is what SATU has begun to do. Therefore, we resolve, Comrade President, that COSATU now, COSATU should establish a local procurement office which will provide and promote affordable quality paraphernalia for our COSATU affiliates. We continue to say in the resolving part, all affiliates should be compared. I make a cartel of men. We are saying now it's time for COSATU to compare our affiliates to source their paraphernalia via such a local procurement office. And I thank you, Mengame. Thank you very much, uh, Satu. Uh, um, I see Nehau, Lemosa. Take the floor, Nehau. Uh, our doctors, Sama, you will follow Lemosa. of local uh, procurement. But President, uh, in supporting the resolution, we think that uh, the resolved part of the resolution needs to be reworked. We don't think, President, we need to burden the Federation by establishing a procurement office for COSATU to coordinate uh, procurement by affiliates. But if we have a shop and institutions that are available that sells local product, affiliates can procure direct from that shop instead of doing it via a, 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 a procurement office in the office of the Federation. We think that uh, uh, if SATU can uh, agree to that because this will give a, a serious burden or put serious burden to the Federation, but there's nothing wrong in procuring direct from the, from the shop president. That's all we want to post in support of the resolution. Thank you very much, Nehao Limosa. Mandibuli is among men. We also, as Ilimusa, we stand to support Abasibenzi Bumkapu about a local procurement promotion. We want to, to, to start to clarify that the most problem that we are facing with about this problem is that in South Africa, most of the goods that we have are the goods that are coming from other countries. Then that makes this problem of losing the jobs, as Minister Patel 
did mention that we lose 5,000 jobs. So we want to urge our government, our government to make sure that as the South Africans, we, we supply other countries more than the goods that are coming to our country. Because if you can go to other countries, they receive less than what they are giving to other countries. So we want our government to assist us. If we, have, we don't have resources to build goods from South Africa, I think our government must come in and try to assist in that problem. Thanks, Mr. Chief. Thank you very much, Emosa, uh, the football players. Thank you. Thank you, President. President, the issue of local procurement is very, very important to us and our industry. You know, football is a multi-billion rand industry. And we feel that very little is done by the clubs to procure their fans, t-shirts, and all of that local. Most of those apparels come from China. And this is millions and millions and millions of rents. And some of us in this room are buying China-made products of football. And I know there are Kaiser Chiefs fans here. Nikona. Yeah. I know there are Pirates fans in here. I was out to fight the Congress here too. <laughs> Now, most of these products are brought in from beyond our shores. And I believe that this Congress needs to pronounce itself on this issue. Football needs to play its part in building this economy. Now, the second point, President, that I want to make is that there's this rule called six five in football, where six players can be local players, and then five players can be foreign players. We welcome expertise from players who are from beyond our shores. We understand and appreciate that there's been great players in the past. The likes of Lavmo Chafunya, currently you have players like Besuma and many others. We appreciate their service. But we have a problem of a unique kind. And I'm glad the government officials are also here. Where a player, after playing for five years in South Africa, becomes South African. Now you end up with a situation where you have 11 players playing on the field, six are South African who are nationalized, but cannot play for Bafana Bafana. And then the other five have a foreign status. So President, this is something that our members have expressed countless times, that our football, the way it's structured right now, does not empower the local players. Instead, that rule is abused by the clubs, where they use now foreign players to basically have cheap labor. Because if a player is earning 2,000 rands and is a Malawian or any other country around the continent, they will bring that player in a place of a local youngster who can do this very same job. As a result, it weakens our national team in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. 
So we are saying, President, that this is something that we would like Congress to take up and ensure that we can be able to change some of these rules. Because when you go in other countries, it doesn't, it's not done like that. If you're a foreigner, you are regarded as a foreigner, no matter how many years you play in that country. So that the 6-5 can really be 6-5. Thank you, President. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we now should go back to Sub 2 uh, as the sponsors of the resolution. It seems Congress does accept the resolution except for those areas which they are proposing a change uh, and making additions. Uh, but sub two, uh, you want to respond, it's your resolution. There's more one. We, we don't think there's much to respond to because most of the affiliates that responded to that resolution made comments and they were amending. And therefore, we are flexible, except for the amendment from Nehau. We, we believe or we think that maybe, including the establishment of a schedule of local uh, um, produced, which affiliates can source, it can, can be a resolve to, to, to the Nehau Amendment. But we, we are flexible, President. We welcome the, the comments and the amendments from all the affiliates who articulated to the resolution, except to say we are flexible in how that we can work something out um, instead of uh, utilizing COSATU as an office for procurement. Thanks, Mengamin. Uh, I must check Nehau uh, to ask that response. You covered. Okay, the resolution is passed by Congress. Thank you very much. And comrades, if you're looking into the pace you are moving and the resolutions that are still outstanding, we're not doing well. I will push you. The wealth uh, tax, Saktu. President, thank you. We won't waste your time, but uh, as far as we understand, uh, that resolution has been dealt with. When we did the first resolution for the how we brought it as an amendment. It was accepted and the matter is settled. Thank you very much. Any seconders or additions from other affiliates? Uh, Dinosa, take the floor. And Sama. No, no, President. Like, like Saktu was saying, this resolution was dealt with, uh, I think, even yesterday, and we agreed with the motivation. We therefore second. Okay. No. Thanks very much. Uh, and that I'm no more going to take uh, uh, Sama due to the fact that uh, the point was made by Saktu that the same resolution is covered elsewhere, and the NOSA does support. Not unless there is a vehement objection, uh, which I doubt. Uh, Sama, uh, can we then move quick to the 2.6, uh, no, 2.5, employment equity and equal opportunity and disability, NUM? We're, we're reminding each other that we agreed that these are read already. We are zooming into the recommendations. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. President. We are, our second target are not here now. We are 
something is happening with that mic, if it could be elevated and at least... Please speak to the mic, Deputy President. Yeah, thank you, uh, Comrade President. Uh, we, we will do according to the directive that we have to go to the resolve. Uh, the resolution is about implementing the implementing President. As you know that uh, there has been some kind of the inequality which was created by the discriminative that has taken more than 300 years in this country and we are scrambling to try to strike the balance among the communities in this country. Under the resolve, Comrade President, we are saying that um, Cosado trade unions in particular must embark on a campaign on the harmonization of salaries between men and women as a matter of urgency and as a priority for the next collective bargaining rounds. I think in this one, we want to emphasize that there are still companies that are still discriminating against the women, uh, even if they have the same qualification with men. And at point B, we are saying that the union must prioritize the monitoring of employment equity commitments by employers. And the uh, we are saying that by participating in the relevant government platforms and facilitate the seeking of legal recourse. You know, here um, we have this policy of um, employment equity, which is a uh, part of the constitution of this country. Employers are not complying, totally not complying. And there's nothing within the law which is clear that uh, if the company does not comply, uh, drastic measures should be taken against such companies. So we think that we need to put uh, screws in that one. C says that uh, ensure regular reporting on progress made regarding employment equity trends, in particular gender disparities, utilizing relevant departments and labor institutions, uh, conciliation and arbitration. We think that there must be a forum uh, which uh, includes all affiliated units within COSATO that will monitor the implementation uh, of uh, employment equity. And finally, Comrade uh, President, the salary disparities uh, are done away so that the women uh, are illuminated equally, the same base with their counterpart males. Here, there is this performance management system which falls under disparities where supervisors sometimes, white supervisors, will rate uh, the people of other colors, especially the black Africans uh, and women, uh, in a way that uh, disadvantage them. And they rate others because of their color and or because of their sex uh, up. So we say that uh, there must be an equal kind of uh, treatment in terms of salaries, comrade president. I think that is the result. Uh, in terms of implementing it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And you, M, can we get uh, a seconder? Faust. No, thank you, President. Uh, we, 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 we are inclined to support the resolution as proposed by the National Union of Mine Workers. However, we want to persuade them to consider uh, accepting this particular edition. It could be reconstructed by Secretariat somehow. Uh, we, we have taken a note as far that uh, race still plays a very serious determinant uh, factor with regard to what, who should be paid. Uh, the question of women and men, yes, still remains an issue that needs to be addressed, but equally race has still and is still stubbornly one of the factors that determines what, who should pay. 
We therefore want to uh, request uh, Noom through the Congress that we emphasize from your noting to your believing, actually at your believing you have covered that particular issue, and at the resolve that you include the question of race. It is given that uh, blacks are still the lowest paid uh, group of, of, of race. So that, that's, that's the first point we wanted to raise. However, we are supporting this particular resolution. President, we are equally struggling to deal with the question of the report on socioeconomic uh, uh, matters because there are issues we want to raise. I, we respect your approach with regard to us dealing with the resolutions. We have looked at the resolutions that deal with socioeconomic issues. They are quite uh, a lot, if, 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 you, if you permit. If I wanted to propose, President, that we somehow find a way of dealing with new resolutions in a particular fashion, but resolutions that are existing already within the Federation, where there are slight changes, they be treated a bit different, such that you could be able to address the report or the issues raised in the report and the proposed resolution. We are having a concern that we may not be able to interrogate the report and thereby at some point we'll be expected to adopt the report that we have not necessarily inter interrogated. If you permit us, we would be going through those particular issues. But now that the Congress agreed on a particular approach, we'd like you to assist us in that, in that, in that regard. Thank you. Yes, I, I would want you to keep to what you agreed to and which was adopted by Congress earlier in the interest of time. Uh, Ku and Dinosa should go and vote. Uh, Saktu, uh, the SGO of the NC is here. He takes responsibility of any delinquency in the organization. Uh, we've got this phone. We are told it belongs to an NEC member of the ANC. I won't mention his name. I'll tell you as you come closer. Uh, I will bring it to you, Nopal. But, uh, Saktu. Thanks, President. President, we rise to support the, the adoption of the resolution. We agree indeed with FAO. But, however, we think FAO has only address the issue of race. And as such, we are comfortable with the believing part and the resolved part, except for bullet D. We feel that in line with what FAO has said, line D should also say um, equal pay for equal job. We want to amend the resolved part on bullet D, more equal job. Um, equal job for equal pay. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was another hand earlier, but on the point that Fa was raising, I think we should be able to respond. But I think the resolution does get uh, uh, to be supported. And I can, uh, if there is no other union or SACP, Thank you, President. We just want to add two things, Chair, in the support. That the first one, Chair, should be a consistent, coordinated campaign by the Federation and the unions for democratization of the workplace. Because we can put the resolution if we don't have campaign matters pertaining to the adherence to the employment equity legislation and the fact that when companies do not adhere to prescribed rules, the state or the Department of Labor in line with different charters that we sign of sectors those companies should be made to behave as if they are compelled by law, but the Federation and its unions must have campaigns publicly 
targeting those employers that do not comply with the requirements of the legislations. Otherwise, we can resolve they will still not comply for as long we don't put pressure on campaigns against them and then campaigns against central processes that have to do with government coordination. Thanks, President. Thank you very much, Sakau. So I'm sorry, uh, my, my president there. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I understand, President. Sure. Uh, yeah, President, that's, we were a little bit confused then in terms of the, the content of the, the resolutions. Because we thought that uh, the resolution has actually been surpassed by the development, the current development. Because if the Congress can re remember that on the 1st of June, I think the Minister of Labor have actually passed into law the Amendments on Employment Equity Act. And part of that amendment uh, talks in terms of the code of good practice that emphasize on the equal pay and uh, equal remuneration for work of equal value. So there is a law that, 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 that speaks to that. What we need then to do, if there is lack of compliance into that particular law. We need then to campaign to ensure that those who are defaulters then in terms of implementing such are then brought to books. So we wanted to highlight on that particular aspect, President. Thanks. Thank you very much. Otherwise, you're not opposed to the resolution with that area. And I want NUM to just uh, respond a little bit to what has been raised and then we move. Yeah, thank you very much, Comrade President. Now, with the amendments that have been um, raised by some affiliates here, we are not opposed to it. And with the fact to the new law that the Comrade has spoken about, and uh, the input by the Communist Party that we need to enforce a monitoring system, we think that we accept uh, those amendments, Comrade President. Thank you. Thank you very much. The resolution is accepted by Congress and therefore endorsed. Thank you very much. The national minimum wage, NUM, again. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade President. Um, as you know, Comrade President, that uh, when Africa was colonized, uh, the colonizers established a salary structure uh, called partisan grade, named after a man who actually uh, designed that structure across Africa. That structure has created um, inequality that we are experiencing now, whereby some people are earning higher than others who are in the bottom line of the latter. Our uh, experience is that we need to have a minimum wage. In NUM, I want you to stick to the rule because we have read now and okay. we are saying the resolve must be what is guiding us uh, on your resolution. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade President. Our resolve is very clear here. We say that COSATO should embark on a red show to roll out workshops on the basis of organizing and mobilizing workers, communities and other federations on the issue of minimum wage dedicate May Day to the National Day of Mass Action around minimum wage, create platform for public engagement, and mobilize and engage all stakeholders, communities including across federation, on the national minimum wage based on the minimum program. Build momentum on the government plans through engaging the alliance led by a strategic partners. That is the resolve that we uh, are presenting as NUM because we believe that uh, minimum wage should be uh, implemented as a law before the end of 2016. I thank you. Thank you very much, NUM. Congress delegates, I take SAC to Sakau, Limosa, you will follow, and Fau and Samu in that order. Oh, Sasbo, you'll also come then. Thanks. Thank you, President. Uh, good afternoon. 
When the uh, national minimum wage matter arose, uh, SACTU called a shop stewards council to discuss the matter. And uh, in March this year, about 200 shop stewards came together to discuss the modalities of a national minimum wage. We want to share some of those outcomes and feed it into the uh, National Union of Mine Workers resolution. The first thing is uh, we support the, the NUM's resolution, but we believe, we believe it could be strengthened and we propose some amendments. We want to make two comments before we propose those amendments. First, we want to call on all COSATO affiliates to make progress on developing a level for the national minimum wage to ensure that our negotiations at NEDLAC is fully mandated. We also want to stress that the national minimum wage is a minimum wage and not a maximum wage. And we need to, to take into account different job categories when setting the minimum wage. For instance, in our sector, the lowest job category would be a, a general worker. President, when we get specifically to the amendments, we want to refer to page 26 and the resolved part there. We want to suggest the addition of F under resolve. And F would say the following, that the first national minimum wage be set through negotiation and not be outsourced to, to an independent body of experts as proposed by business. President, this is important because there is deadlock at the moment at NEDLAC because business believes that this should be an academic exercise, this should be a technical exercise. And for us, this is clearly a political decision. The national minimum wage is a political decision, and for that reason, we should be negotiating it at NEDLAC. And as for that, that's the motivation for including that specific amendment. President, we also want to amend E under the resolve. It currently says, build momentum on the government's plans through engaging the alliance led by the strategic partners. We want to strengthen this specific clause by adding the following words. Firstly, say urgently build momentum. There's clearly been some delay on this matter and we think uh, we need to address that. So we say urgently build momentum on the government's plans and to support NEDLAC negotiation through engaging the alliance led by strategic partners. So it's not just about government's plans, but it's also about the NEDLAC negotiations. And we need to put pressure on that NEDLAC negotiation to ensure progress, to ensure that we have a national minimum wage as quickly as possible. And we want to use the uh, uh, ability to, to, to pull in the alliance and to work with the ANC on this matter. President, finally, at the top of page
want to support uh, in, in um, resolution and some of the areas has been covered by um, the comrade from SACTU. However, we want to underline that um, the resolve part could be, uh, could be strengthened and we should add um, the following wording that it should be a national minimum wage, wage that is based on the concept of decent wage in line with our concept and campaign of decent work and that it should be non-discriminatory. We, we, we believe that, um, as Sattu has said, under E of the, um, the believing part, um, under E, we're not capturing that in the resolve part of how we're actually going to deal with it. And our understanding is it um, that um, if a national minimum wage is set on decent wages, then it should ca capture, and it is non-discriminatory, it should capture um, the believing part of E. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sakao. Let's take Fau. No, no thanks, President. Uh, again, uh, President, we would like to propose uh, an addition consistently uh, that should, in a way, find a way from noting to believing up to and including resolved. That the question of the existence, or rather, uh, protection of the apartheid wage structure is still with us. We need to take note of such. We also would like the National Union of Mine Workers to be persuaded to consider inclusion of a noting with regard to the working poor who are ravaging in poverty, who are of course, I mean, note the high level of inequalities and for that matter, the question of unemployment. We, we would want to add, President, that under the believing, there be an expression, National Union of Mine Workers, that relates to the fact that we believe that the introduction of a national minimum wage would give rise to address level of poverty and inequality. We equally believe that the introduction of the national minimum wage, contrary to what uh, other commentators may wish to state, would not necessarily lead to heightened level of unemployment. We lastly, President, once the National Union of Mine Workers, and I think we all are agreeing to that, that we emphasize that this is a legislated minimum wage. Therefore, where we talk of a national minimum wage, we are consistent thereof on the legislated minimum wage. And that this does not necessarily replace or defer our campaign for a living wage. Lastly, we want to persuade, I mean, whilst agreeing with SACTU, that they are proposed addition on E should rather be standalone. We, we were listening to, to, to SACTU with uh, much interest, uh, President, when they were making such an addition, and we want to request that that be a standalone. On B, under resolve, May Day, I, I, I take it that this May Day relates to the Workers' Day, 1st of May. And I would want to persuade mine workers, you know, that uh, we have a dedicated day on this particular subject. This is one of the issues, President, that will not necessarily be settled in the boardroom. It will therefore then need that, because uh, I to take a decision to take this battle to the street. 
if anything is to go by the attitude of business. For that matter, this Congress needs to be very clear so far as far is concerned and at least pronounce what that level should be. We agree it shouldn't be so low such that it does not necessarily make any particular impact or for that matter creates an unnecessary issue around inclusion of all, uh, all, 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 all sectors. We are not necessarily warming up to the idea of a two-tier arrangement as a way of introduction. So we are challenging the Congress President through you, if mine workers agree, that we also talk to the question of that particular level. And we are ready to, to say so. FAO's figure is open secret, is behind our T-shirts. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, FAO. And I'm sure there will be responses uh, from Congress, and in particular the sponsor. Uh, Samu? Thanks, President. Uh, we just want to put some additions. Why we agree with NAM and SAC to and FAO? Want to add so that those that negotiate on our behalf don't forget these important things because the employer tends then to abuse the process. We want the rider that says this national minimum wage should be adjusted annually. We need to be specific so that that uh, uh, minimum wage uh, is reviewed annually. We also want so that it can be able to, cal uh, to cover those who are vulnerable. We need to put a rider that the minimum wage uh, should be calculated on hourly, weekly, and monthly basis so that those who are working less than eight hours, uh, President, are able then uh, to be covered. The last part, we don't want a national campaign to be used in May Day Rally. We are of the view that we need a national day that will do the rolling mass actions where we'll then support this uh, campaign. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I'm happy with that one because NUM, I'm sure we all agree that we want the national minimum wage implemented now. The worst, the best we can wait for is beginning of January. May is too far. <laughs> then uh, uh, there was me commenting, Limusa. Uh, thank you, thank you, President. As uh, Lumusa, uh, in the light of uh, the current uh, economic inequalities in our country, uh, in the light of uh, the, the historic apartheid wage gap, I think in the light of, of, of uh, currently uh, what we call working class poor, workers who remain poor, but from every day they wake up to go to work. And I think it's imperative that uh, we support uh, NOM in the broad trust of the resolution ensuring that there is indeed a minimum wage. Uh, we think, uh, President and the Congress, uh, that this matter remains a serious contested terrain. We might have have an ability to have pushed the movement to have come to this conclusion. But it continues to be a terrain which we must ensure that it is uh, achieved. We want also to align ourselves with a proposal from Sakao that suggests that we cannot leave the matter of defining the figure to the so-called independent bodies, because nothing in the class divided society is independent. Therefore, we think the matter remains a matter to be negotiated and power must be used to ensuring that we achieved a figure, a figure which will lift uh, workers out of poverty, a figure that will ensure that workers have an ability to buy, a buying power which workers will use in ensuring that they, cre they create the economy. Because we, we reject the notion that uh, if workers don't, don't have, they have mini, mi, less money, uh, employers can create more jobs. Our argument and our, our conviction is that if workers have more...
tasked to investigate and expose